Let's get started. Um, welcome to those of us who are here in person in Berkeley for the Statement of Purpose and Application Workshop. And welcome to those who are live streaming or watching us live. And welcome to you if you are watching this later. Um, I hope that what I'm able to offer here will be of use. Um, I hope that it will help you feel more confident about your application, it will help you clarify what you want to put forward so that the faculty readers and those who are making application decisions will be able to really get a sense of your application and will be able to make, um, make good decisions about it. So, uh, the statement of purpose, we're focusing in on that during this workshop in particular because the statement of purpose is really the center of your application. It is, I think, the hardest part. It's the part that people get stuck on a lot. Um, it's the part that people write in later and say, you know, I started an application and I got all my materials together and then I started to work on the application and I, I got into the statement of purpose and I just got overwhelmed. Um, and so I missed the deadline. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what happens a lot. So. We'll just go right into the statement of purpose. I'm going to share some things that it's not and some things that it is, some questions to ask yourself to help you build a great statement of purpose, um, and some things to think about really taking your statement of purpose up to the next level. Um, so we'll start with the question of what is the statement of purpose? Um, it's short, right? And people look at it and they think, Okay, I know what this is. This is a chance for me to rehash my resume, to make sure that I highlight again um, all the things that I've done in all the places that I've been. Well, it's three to 500 words. So unless you haven't done very much, um, you really can't get your whole resume in there. And in fact, if you try, it will sound like you don't have that much else to say. So don't think of it as a place to summarize your resume. Sometimes people think of it in a related way as a chance to highlight awards. Now, I can tell you having read s several of these statements at this point, um, that this is not the place to say, here are the 10 awards that I have received. Here's what they are called. Here's where I got them. There are other places in the application where you should definitely include those awards, and the statement of purpose is not it. In fact, as you're going through, if you find yourself making reference to more than one significant award you've received or an honor you've received, you should take another read. Um, because again, it can kind of feel like you didn't have other stuff to put in there. You just are uh, rehashing things that you had other places to put on the application. Sometimes people feel like the statement of purpose is their chance to say, okay, I have a plan. This is my research plan. Here's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay it out in this order. Um, I am here to tell you, in some ways, faculty can hear that as you saying, I don't need you. I don't need what you have to offer. I already know what I'm doing. I have heard faculty say in response to statements of purpose, well, why would they need to come to school? They've clearly got a plan. They already know how this is all going to go, and in a related way, if you're thinking that this is the place to say, here is the argument that I am going to make, here's the decision that I've already made, here's where this is all going, definitely not the right place for that. Because that can give a real impression um, that you have already decided where this is all going, that you're not going to be paying attention in classes. Um, so, the statement of purpose, not the place to write the first paragraph of your dissertation or your thesis, not even the place for your introduction, definitely not the place for your conclusion. <laughs> Three to five hundred words, and it's not for that. Instead, I want to give you another couple of metaphors to think about as you're thinking about the statement of purpose. The first is a lens. The statement of purpose is what the faculty are going to read first. They start with that. And it is the thing that gives the readers the way to understand the whole rest of the application. It brings everything into focus. It helps them see what things to pay most attention to, what things are a little bit less important. It helps them know what they're looking for in your 
um, in your transcripts, in your letters, if you've said in your statement of purpose, well, I'm focusing on liminality, I'm focusing on the space between, or if you say in your statement of purpose, I'm focusing on culture, then they're going to look in your transcript and see, do you have any background? Have you taken any classes? Um, if you say in your statement of purpose, I'm focusing on theology and science, and here's my question, they're going to look in your transcripts and in your letters to see whether that background is highlighted. So um, you can think of your statement of purpose as a lens that brings the rest of your application into focus. You can also think of your statement of purpose as a thread or, or creating some kind of through line tying the pieces of your application together. This is especially important if you, like me, when I was applying to this program, had a kind of diverse set of background experiences. If you say, hey, my bachelor's degree is not related to my master's degree on the surface, and I have these several other pieces of background material, if they're connected to you, if they stack up to something, then your statement of purpose should serve as some kind of thread to help tie those things together, to help the reader see how your background is connected and how the things that you know because of where you've been and what you've studied and who you've learned from, how those things add up to, to the right background to take you into this next phase that you're proposing. So, Either a lens, or a thread, or both, whichever of those are more helpful to you in thinking about how to organize your statement of purpose. The statement of purpose does have some required details, and I think it's important to mention because one of the questions that the faculty are asking is, can you follow some basic directions? The statement of purpose has at the top of it, when you begin to fill it out in the application, it's three to five hundred words do try to make your statement in that range. The application, our application will not cut you off at 500 words. If you have 525 words, they're probably not going to notice. If you have 700 words, they are absolutely going to notice. They're going to notice, and they're going to say, you felt like what you had to say was more important than, than following the, the instructions that we gave you. That's not a great first impression. Three to five hundred words. Do your best. <laughs> it's hard. It's really short. But that's part of the test here with the statement of purpose is um, it's really short. And can you be concise? Can you decide between things? Can you kill your darlings as, as you know, the saying goes? Um, can you take out the sentences that you really liked because they just don't quite fit? Because they don't add up in this, in this place. Uh, three to five hundred words including your proposed department and concentration and a more specific topic. So this is kind of the very basics. If you just say, I want to do Christian ethics within the theology and ethics department, even in the MA, not quite specific enough. Narrow in a little bit more. I want to do uh, Christian sexual ethics. I want to write about economic ethics. I want to look at um, ethics and gender. I want to look at ethics and leadership. Um, if you're going to say, I want to do Islamic studies, not specific enough, you know, I want to do some Islam in the media, or I want to do um, Islamic practices and race, um, a little bit more specific. The difference between a master's statement of purpose and a PhD has to do with the level of specificity primarily. So in the master's degree, you can have a little bit more broad of an interest with the understanding that you're going to, you're going to narrow over the course. In the PhD, you need to be articulating a pretty good research question, but we'll get there. Um, in the statement of purpose, you should highlight your relevant history and experience. I know I told you not to rehash your, um, your resume and not to go over your accomplishments too much, but you do want to pull in a couple of things that say, um, these things are relevant, these are especially relevant to my topic, I want to make sure they know about these things. Be very judicious with that. Um, and the third thing that we put in our instructions is place your research here at the GTU. Say why this is a good place. This is not a general statement of purpose that you are sending to lots of different schools. This is your GTU statement of purpose, and you should think about that for any school you apply to. Um, look at their specific instructions, look at their specific length, 
and make sure you're writing about what your research would be there, taking advantage of specific faculty resources, taking advantage of specific programs, making it clear why this or any school, why that place is the right place for the research that you want to do. Um, so those are the required details, and you really do need to hit these things. They notice if people don't. Um, but beyond that, we're not looking to just get an adequate statement of purpose. These things in there, you have sort of an adequate statement of purpose, but not everybody with an adequate statement of purpose gets in. You know, just, just filling the requirements is not enough. So I'm going to bring you five questions, five big questions that have some sort of sub-questions to them for a better than adequate statement of purpose. We want to do a little bit better than adequate. We want to have something that really highlights who you are, what you're proposing to study, and how it fits here. And if you go through, this is kind of systematic, and if you go through these questions and really wrestle with them, they will help you narrow down and figure out what really needs to be in your statement of purpose. These are also a great place to refer back to once you have a draft statement to say, have I said something about these questions? So onwards into the questions. The first one is, what are you proposing to study? So this seems pretty basic, but it is, it is not impossible to turn in a statement without saying anything about what you're really proposing to study. I've seen many statements like this. So what is the question you're hoping to answer? What's the phenomenon? Say something about it. What is the thing? You know, draw a circle around it in some way so the faculty can, can figure out, like, oh, okay, I know what this person is trying to study. Um, what piece of theology do you want to complete? Where is there a gap that you want to fill? What religious practice needs attention? What philosophical idea do you want to work with? You don't have to answer all of these questions. These would not all be relevant for any one person's project, but hopefully one or more of them will be relevant and will spark some way of clarifying your project a little bit. The next question is, why is it important? This, this is crucial, to be able to say not just, here is a project that could be done, but here is a project that must be done. Here is a project that needs to be done. The world needs this. So you can ask yourself some questions about that. Why should someone study this thing that you're proposing? What's the benefit? What would come out of it? What are the potential implications? Maybe you're saying, you know, we're, we're hurting people by this practice, and someone needs to study it so that we can stop. Maybe you're saying, this would have implications because if we could really take this topic into account, we would change the way that we live. We would change the way that we organize ourselves. We would change the way that we interact with the natural world. We would, our politics would change. Um, successful statements of purpose have a driving why. And part of that is because successful students in the program have a driving why. Something, if you come in and you say, I thought of a topic, but I don't really know why someone should study it, you're not going to have the motivation to keep pushing through when the scholarship starts being a little bit of a drag, which it is for everyone at some point in their program. Having some kind of a real motivating fire is key. So if you can say, why, why is this important? To whom is it important, perhaps? To whom would you be accountable? Where does this land? And bonus points, if you can articulate briefly, like everything, why is it urgent? Not just why is it important in general, but why is it important now? Why is this the moment that this needs to get done? The third question has to do with you as an applicant. Why should you be the one to study this thing? So this is where you're going to highlight a little bit of your background, a little bit the most relevant, most interesting, um, most timely pieces of what you have done or learned in the past. How are you prepared to undertake this work? Um, what parts of your background are relevant? What advantages do you have in particular to study this thing? So. Um, you definitely don't have to say everything, but you want to say a little bit about why you are the right person for this topic in this time, in this place. Um, what do you already know and what is it? Maybe you have a very brief personal story that explains why you're very motivated on this topic. 
Or maybe you have an unusual combination of things in your background, and the combination of those two things is where your research lies. Um, why, is, why are you the one for this? The fourth question is why should it be done here at GTU? So we talked about this a little bit already, but it's important to articulate why this is a good place, because we get statements of purpose from people all the time where it's a good project and the person is prepared to do it, but either GTU doesn't really have the resources, you know, maybe somebody says, I really want to come and I want to study, you know, this particular indigenous tradition, and we don't have any faculty who have any background on that. So do your research about who is out there who are the faculty, if you're in the MA program, who would be the faculty at that particular school, and who are the faculty in the rest of the GTU, um, in the PhD program, who are the faculty across the GTU, at Cal potentially, um, who are, who's going to help you? What programs or certificates or backgrounds, what kind of library resources that we have um, are going to help you do your work? Um, there's some sort of bonus questions here, I would say, about how does the GTU's diversity help your work? How would it help you to do your work in a place as diverse as this? And how would it help you to do your work here in Berkeley um, with the location and the history that are here? Because part of what we try to do as a school is prioritize people whose work could only be done here or people whose work would be best suited here. And people with a strong project that could probably be done just as well in a lot of other places might get in, depending on who else applies. But, um, but we're really looking for people who can articulate, like, this is the best place for this research. Um, so that's the fourth question. And the fifth one is, how will you go about studying this? How are you going to get this done? What's your plan? So if you can say a little bit, you don't have to say much. Like I said, too much and you get into the territory of, of planning your thesis here, but um, how are you going to get this done? What methods are you going to use? What sources? Um, what background material? What non-theological fields? This question is much more important for PhD applicants because you're going to be articulating a bigger and more, um, more specific project, but in the MA, if you can say a little bit about, you know, I plan, I think I'll need to use interviews, or I think I'll, I'll be working primarily with um, with this kind of source material, or um, I'm going to be using this, I, I'm looking forward to using this oral history. Um, so, and major theories or theorists, anything like that, that you can say, this is where I'm starting. Um, sometimes people feel a little bit pinned down by this, and I let me reassure you that people change their minds all the time. So don't yes. feel like you're signing a contract in some kind of permanent marker here, saying, I will definitely work in this way with these people. But giving the faculty a sense that you kind of know who's in the field, you kind of know what resources are typically used, um, those can be really helpful. So just giving people, um, giving people a view that you know where you know where to start. So if I just answer all these questions, I'll get in, right? <laughs> If I just follow these instructions, gosh, I wish that were true. It would be so straightforward to be able to tell people, follow these exact things and do it in this way, and that's a definite in. Um, applications are complicated, mm -hmm. but the statement of purpose is your chance to put the rest of your application in focus, to help the faculty read the rest of your application well, to highlight the things you need them to see, to help them know what they're looking for. So beyond answering those questions, it's also important that the, uh, that the application feel like it has a cohesive theme, particularly in the statement of purpose. If the faculty get to the end of it, the best statements of purpose, the faculty walk away saying, I know what that application is about. That application is about boundaries and border crossing. Or that application is about um, decision making on the fly and how people do that. Or that application is about, um, you know, it's really about parenting and it's about how, you know, how parents and children transmit faith. If they walk away from your whole statement of purpose feeling like they have a short phrase, they know what, what's kind of the theme of your statement of purpose, that's really helpful. Um, so that's, that's this question. I forgot I made a slide for that. Uh, what is this application about? Um, 
You also, it's very helpful to ask yourself, what would it mean for GTU to be the home for this work? So not just what it would mean for you, but what it would mean for the school. So if they walk away thinking, wow, that person is really going places, or this is gonna be really important work, and we wanna have that done here. We want to be the place that launches this person into their career. We want to be the place that sends this person forward into where they're going next. Um, we want to be the ones to work with this person. That can be really helpful. Uh, and the big picture question, how would the world be different if this applicant did this work? The faculty are asking this question. Um, how would the world be different? How would things be changed if this person came here if you came here and did what you're proposing to do, uh, you don't want to get too overblown about this, and it's definitely possible to overstate. Um, so rather than you saying the sentence, the world would be different in such and such way if I do this, what you want is for your application to kind of seed that into the minds of the faculty without being too explicit about it. So uh, ideally, they walk away and like, wow, I can't wait for that person to come here I can't wait for you to come here and study this thing and do this work because the world will be different, because things will change. Um, so if they walk away with that, that is an excellent statement of purpose. That's kind of the difference between an even better than adequate and an excellent statement of purpose. The faculty walk away with this sense that they're excited, they're on board with your project. They want you to come here and do that work and they know what it matters what's going to happen afterwards. So, um, a few tips that I hope you won't need, but I always feel like I need to say them. Please proofread your statement of purpose. It is not only important so that the faculty can understand what you're saying, but also so that they're not reading your statement of purpose and thinking, this person is going to be kind of a pain to have in class because they're going to turn in papers that are also not proofread and I'm going to have to go through and make grammar notes on something Please proofread your statement of purpose. It's extremely important. Particularly for those who are watching on the live stream, if English is not your first language, please get a native English speaker to proofread with you. Um, it's very helpful, and it can help put a lot of other things in context. So um, if your statement of purpose is really clear and really excellent, um, even if you have been coming from, if you're coming from another school where um, you haven't studied in English before, if your TOEFL scores are a little bit low, um, if your, your statement of purpose can be really important for that, please proofread. Um, I definitely shouldn't have to say this, but I'm definitely going to. Make sure you are not naming a different school or someone else's faculty in your statement of purpose. Yes. People make this mistake a lot. Um, and it's because people are copying and pasting. We totally understand. All of us in the admissions office have been um, through this process ourselves. We know, but don't, you know, don't rub it in the faculty's faces that you're uh, thinking about other places. So be careful about that. Um, ask for feedback from professors, reviewers, friends, whoever you have around that you think would be able to help you clarify or help sort of read from a different angle. Uh, get other people to read it. Um, and again, please make sure the length is in the right range. Um, it's pretty important. So to recap, a good statement of purpose, a great statement of purpose puts your entire application in focus. It draws everything into exactly where you need it. It helps the faculty see what they need to see. It helps them understand things that might on the surface be concerning or confusing. Um, and a good statement of purpose, an excellent statement of purpose is possible. This is not an impossible task. Um, if you have something that you want to study and you have a reason you want to study it, um, this is totally possible. So for further support, um, as you're working on your statement, as you're wrestling with it, uh, there's lots more information that's on our website, uh, gtu slash admission slash applying, which is also easy to navigate to from gtu.edu. So uh, you can find lots of tips there as well. You can certainly email the admissions office with specific questions. Uh, we're very happy to answer. We're very happy to work with you. Um, the admissions office wants everyone who's applying to have the strongest application they can. So we are happy to work with you. We are happy to answer your questions. Um, and if you'd like to come in and meet with us in person, if you're local or if you're going to be in the area, um, 
just send us an email at visits at gtu.edu and we'll get a, a meeting set up. So that, in a nutshell, uh, is the statement of purpose. And uh, if you're watching either on the live stream or later, um, I wish you the best on your statement and wherever you're applying. And if you're here in person, uh, I'm very happy to answer questions. So if you guys have questions that you would like us to get to, uh, let me know. I don't know if we're going to keep live streaming for the questions, or um, maybe I should find out if we have questions first. Do we have questions? We can. Um, Do people have questions? I'm like I'm processing a lot. <laughs> It's a lot to take in. <laughs> Maybe second guessing some of uh, yeah, <laughs> some things I've done, but um, <laughs> maybe that too. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's okay. I, this is how I felt about my own statement of purpose. Now I got in here, but um, definitely working in the admissions office and reading all these other ones and really getting a sense of what the faculty are reading for. I think, oh, I would have done that differently if I had yeah. it to do again. Uh, so. That's why I'm passionate about getting this information into people's hands. So Thank you. Can, yeah, I'm honestly going to like photocopy this. <laughs> <laughs> um, questions. I guess, how do you deal with a candidate um, who you do like but doesn't hit some of these requirements? Like, I guess, what if someone feels like they cannot get all of this within the 300 to 500 words? Like, what should they prioritize, or should that be like a gut feeling? And if it's left out, how do you deal with it? Well, it's not, it's not as if we're reading with a checklist. Mm. It's not as if we're going through the statement of purpose and we're saying, check project, check motivation, check, you know. Um, and people get them in in a different order. Mm -hmm. They come in as a coherent narrative. Sometimes it's more like a hint towards something than getting like a full sentence towards one thing. So, and the faculty are certainly not reading with a checklist. They're reading holistically that up the statement of purpose as a whole, uh, and walking away with it, walking away with an impression, really, um, more than a sense of like check, check, check on the list. Um, however. I think if you were missing any of these things in a significant way, if they read it and they were like, I don't know what this person's project is, or this seems like a cool project and a good motivation, but I don't understand how this person is prepared to do it. Um, or, you know, this, like, this person seems ready to do this project, but um, they really haven't done any research about how it fits here at GTU. Um, or at the PhD level, this actually does trip people up. Um, I see how this would be a good project here for GTU, and they seem pretty prepared, um, you know, in terms of the topic. But they really don't—they haven't given any indication that they are ready for this level by being able to say something about method or, or um, with where they're going to start with it. So, if any of those pieces were were completely missing, I think it it would flag some things for them about a person not being quite ready to go. Um, so I would say try, you know, try to get everything in. And at a master's application, you don't have to worry about method and theory so much, so um, unless you really know where you want to start with something, it's okay to say, like, well, that's, we'll get there, that's fine. Um, but better to sort of clarify and shorten things to try to make sure you're giving them all of that information in a brief way than to, like, go into a lot of depth in your background or go into a lot of depth in the story of how you came to this and not get to some of the other uh, questions about like why here or why now or things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know if that's helpful, helpful. maybe yeah. discouraging. <laughs> uh, it's, I guess it, uh, it feels like a lot of it kind of has to do with knowing yourself and like knowing what you want to. Yeah, and that's intentional uh, yeah. the, because the statement of purpose partly is GTU asking, are you going to come in here and flail around? Are you going to come in here and be like, oh no, I don't know what I'm studying or why I wanted to, or um, change topics three or four times? Like people, this is this statement of purpose and these questions are the fruit of many, many years of figuring out which students are kind of ready to come in and succeed. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly because our programs at GTU are, you've got to be pretty self-motivated. You've got to be organized. You've got to kind of have a sense of where you're going. Um, it's, it's less um, specified than some other programs. At the master's level, that's true. At the PhD level, it's even more true. Um, 
students really need to be kind of self-organized and self-motivated and come in to lay out a plan, work with their advisors. Um, and so the statement of purpose is partly your opportunity to say, I'm the kind of person who's going to be able to handle that. Um, there, because there isn't going to be a list that says if you take these classes in this order, then that's it, you're done. Um, yeah. You have to be able to work um, collaboratively with other people to develop a plan to put together the materials you need to do the project you're proposing. So, um, yeah, it's it's a double-edged sword in a way. Yeah, yeah. I have a question. Great. If uh, suppose someone saw on the social media feed that this workshop was happening, mm -hmm. and this is like they're the first thing they've done yeah. to be thinking about, maybe I want to get an MA or a mm -hmm. PhD. Totally. Can you talk a little bit about kind of where we are in the process and deadlines and is it is it too late to even be thinking about an MA for the fall <laughs> ah, or, sure. a, or a doctoral program for the fall? If uh... Great questions. It is 100% too late to be thinking about the doctoral program for this coming fall, um, <laughs> but for the MA program it is not too late. Um, the priority deadline for the MA program is March 1st, which is coming up pretty soon now, but for the, it, after the March 1st deadline, it becomes a sort of rolling process, so we are happy to accept applications for about a month after that deadline as people prepare them. I would say try to get it closer to March 1st than April 1st, but um, for fall, we are certainly happy to still accept applications, and it would be great if you're thinking about that, if you could email us at admissions at gtu.edu and let us know that you're working on an application so we can sort of know who's in that pipeline. Um, so that's for fall. There's also a spring start to the MA program, and that priority deadline is October 1st. So if you're sort of working on it now, but you're not quite sure that you're going to get ready this spring, uh, it's certainly possible to start um, a year from now by applying in October. Uh, the PhD program, applications are, have a firm deadline of December 15th. Um, so December 15th, you really need to have your things in by then because MA applications are sort of considered one by one because there's so many different member schools and centers. It's more a question of does this person, is this person prepared to start studying here and is there a good faculty match? The PhD program is much more competitive. Um, applications are considered as a batch and so we need to have them all in at once so that we can consider them all together so that we can um, do ranking and, and admission that way. So December 15th, that's a firm deadline. It is also possible to come in the meantime, if you're local, if you're not thinking of moving here for this, but um, it's entirely possible to take individual classes under what we call a special student status. So um, if you want to become a special student and take a class or two or more without or before being enrolled in a degree program, that is also entirely possible. And that application is also on our website, um, and the deadline is not until about two weeks before the start of the new semester. So you could apply for special student status any time up until August to start in September, and any time through mid-January to start in February. Um, and that can be a great way, taking a class or two for credit can be a great way um, to test out what it's like and also to sort of get started if you miss an application deadline uh, because those classes will be on your record. They'll go right into if you enroll in a degree program, those classes can just go right on your transcript. Uh, did that answer most of that application? It sure question? did. Thank Great. you. Any other questions?